So one of the problems that occurs if you pay too much attention to my sermons is that uh, you pick up easily when I use the same story again or the same joke. Uh, and I'm sure you're saying to yourself, Ben, don't worry, that's not a problem. Uh, but I do recall that I've told you this one before, but I thought it was fitting, so I decided to, uh, to use it again. Uh, do you all remember Saturday Night Live when they used to have those deep thoughts by John Handy? You know, where it's sort of like a sunset scene and then kind of frosted over and then the words would sort of cascade down. Well, there was one particular one that suggested that it was always a good idea to carry two bags. Uh, that if you always carried two bags, no matter who you ran into uh, or what they asked you to do, you could always say, I would love to, except I have these two bags in my hand. Uh, and I think sometimes uh, our, our, our Christianity comes with bags in our hands. We have things uh, that get in the way of us truly giving ourselves over to discipleship. And I think that's what we're actually called to. Uh, Richard Rohr, who's a Catholic theologian, suggested that the church is somewhat split in our understanding of what we're about. Are we about the worshiping of Christ or the following of Jesus? And he said that they're distinctly different. Uh, the worshiping of Christ uh, is a wonderful thing, but it really allows us to go back and do whatever we want to do afterwards. Uh, we worship Christ, we give thanks for all Christ did for us, uh, and we go back into our lives and we get to do what we want to do. Following Jesus, on the other hand, is not easy as we hear today. And it lends towards transformation, towards amendment of life, towards shaping our life around the person and teaching of Jesus. And it's much harder work. But it's the work that we're called to do. And I think we see in these readings today uh, that that's exactly uh, what's being nagged on our, 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 our coattails. Uh, are you following Jesus? Are you worshiping Christ and bending that worship to the way that you already intended to live your life in the first place? So we have the epistle today, which we same as we were talking about last week. Uh, the church in Galatia is separated. Uh, you've got the, uh, the Jews who, uh, who are celebrating this new discovery of Jesus, who are trying to bend that into uh, to what they already practiced. And they, they're taking the law and they're, uh, they're obeying the big things. Uh, but that gives them the freedom to, to live kind of as loosely as they want. But they still feel pretty good about themselves because they've... Uh, 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 They've gone through the process of following the law, at least as, 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 well as, they're, um, as well as they're comfortable. They've been circumcised. Now you have these other folks, the Gentiles, who are coming into this new community. Uh, they're being told that, that they're not really followers of Jesus because they don't know all the Jewish traditions. They're not following those lives. Uh, and Jesus says, uh, and it's, pretty, it's worth listening to, he says, if you keep biting at each other, if you keep chewing at each other, be wary that you won't end up consumed. There can be nothing left. And he says the heart of all of the law, the heart of it all is to love your neighbor as yourself, which is part of uh, the baptismal promises we will make on your behalf today. Uh, and we'll make and recall our own baptismal covenant as well, that we will love our neighbor as ourselves. And we've heard that so many times uh, that I think it's lost some of its, its, its poignancy, some of its power and some of its message. Loving our neighbor as ourselves uh, really means that we care as much about someone else's child, especially someone else's child that might go hungry or someone else's child that's, uh, that's broken and suffering uh, as we do about our own child, and that's hard to do. It's the difference between our responsibility that we have for our own child, and sometimes I think that becomes some of the bags that we carry. Uh, so let's go to the gospel, uh, and in the gospel, we have almost a retelling of the, the story, the first story we heard, the story from, uh, from Second Kings. Uh, and we have Jesus coming into uh, a Samaritan town, and he's been rejected. Uh, and as he comes into the town and he's rejected, it says that he has uh, his eye in the, towards the sky, uh, that he knows his time has come uh, for him to be taken up. He knows it's his time to be taken up, which echoes uh, the same thing that Elijah is going through. Uh, and it says that he has his eyes facing Jerusalem. So he goes into the Samaritan town, uh, and he's rejected. Now, do you remember what story Jesus told when somebody, uh, 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 Peter, was challenging? So who's our neighbor? Remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Uh, so it's kind of a, a connection here. Uh, so these are the same disciples who Jesus, in the same chapter, has just come down from the, uh, the Mount Tabor after the transfiguration. And as soon as he gets to the bottom, uh, people are coming and they said, you know, we asked your disciples to, uh, to help 
uh, heal this, this person who had demons, and uh, the disciples weren't able to do it. And he says, you have little faith. You know, God's given you the power to do all these things. These same people, James and John, uh, as soon as they get into S uh, Samaria and uh, they're, notice Jesus is rejected, uh, they say the most ludicrous thing. Something that's never printed on our school t-shirts. Uh, St. James, uh, do you want me to bring down fire and consume them all? Is essentially what they said. So all of a sudden they've gotten pretty big in their britches. Uh, the sons of thunder want to bring down fire from the heavens and decimate the entire uh, uh, group of people. Uh, and Jesus says no. He probably doesn't just say no. He probably has his, his head in his hands and say you don't understand. Do you remember the story about loving your neighbor? Do you remember I even said the Samaritans when we talked about that story? Who's your neighbor? And the difference was that the Samaritans uh, believed that all of, uh, of the promised land that where, uh, where Abraham uh, sacrificed Isaac, where Moses was supposed to go, uh, was, at, uh, was supposed to take place at Mount Gorazon instead of in Jerusalem. So when he said he has his eyes on Jerusalem, uh, that's sort of the tension, is that they have different holiest of holy sites and different beliefs around that. Uh, but Jesus says, no, it's not about that. It's not about our differences. It's about what we're called to do. It's about the sacrifices we're called to make. And so somebody, while he's there, says, I want to follow you. And Jesus, uh, again, the three times that Elijah uh, uh, tells, uh, or, or uh, Elisha tells Elijah, uh, I will follow you wherever you go. Each time Elijah says, stop, stop here, let me go by myself. Each time Elisha says, I will follow. And so we have the three things repeated in the gospel today. And the first time, uh, someone says, I want to follow you, Jesus. And Jesus says, you don't really know what you're saying. You don't know how hard it's going to be. I would love you to follow, but listen, there is no place for me to lay my head. If you follow me, you've given up your freedom. You've given up uh, the comfort that you have. You are going wherever God leads you, and it'll be different. And then he tells others, says, follow me. But he brings up another temptation or another thing that separates us. Uh, the person says, well, I would love to follow. You know, Jesus, this is going to be a great adventure. But first, I need to bury my, my father, which doesn't mean that his father is dead. It means that he has a familial responsibility, uh, that to take care of his aging parent. And a noble one. I mean, that's a pretty noble responsibility, one that we take on. Uh, but it's one of the bags that he's carrying. It's one of the bags that keeps him from doing what God has called one of the bags that keeps them from understanding that uh, loving your neighbor as yourself forces you to get outside of your family. And that's a hard one. And that's one what I think uh, pulls on all of us is how do we understand our role as Christians apart from our family? I knew well before I donned this collar, well before I had any idea of what I want to do when I grew up several majors ago uh, that I wanted to be a father. I knew from a young age that's what I wanted to do when I grew up. And that's one of the, uh, the most incredible responsibilities I've taken on. I also made the covenant in front of God before I was ordained uh, as a husband, and that's one of the most important roles I've taken on. And they both exist, and they are critical roles, uh, but those don't exist apart from my responsibility as a Christian. Uh, and how do I marry them and not keep them as bags that keep me from, uh, from making decisions that are daring, that involve uh, stepping out, that involve building up the kingdom of God, which is what we're called to do. And I think that's sort of one of the tensions that exists uh, and remains. Uh, we want to care for our loved ones, uh, but we can't forget that that God reminds us that all of God's children are our loved ones. They all are our responsibility. And our job is not to build a fence around our family and protect them at all costs. And if we have any uh, generosity or any time or any care after we're done with that, we can just let it spill forward on the other side of the fence. We're called to open up that fence. And then the third time, the third time Jesus says, follow me. Someone says, uh, absolutely, but just let me go and get my stuff and let me go and say goodbye to my loved ones and just sort of, you know, the, the things that you would do. And Jesus knows. Jesus knows as soon as he goes and opens that door and walks back into that house that he's not coming back. That that pull of the security uh, and that other bag that we can carry of family is so strong uh, that it'll, it'll suck him in. It's not that Jesus doesn't respect these responsibilities, these obligations. It's not that Jesus doesn't see them as part of our responsibility as a Christian, but they're not limited. They can't be the bags that keep us from saying, yes, what can I do? From seeing the disenfranchised, the lost, the child that, uh, that we might not like our kids playing with as part of our family, as someone that we're called to care for. So that's what Jesus calls us to, to 
understanding that loving our neighbor as ourselves, to understand all those virtues uh, that we hear in the, sec- in the last sentence of Galatians, calls us not just to worship Christ and go back to the comfort of our life the way we want it, but to be followers of Jesus, to drop our bags and to realize that we are all God's family. Sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, beloved children of God. And we walk it together and we need to take care of one another. And that's what loving your neighbor looks like. It involves transformation. And when we do that, we're following the person of Jesus, which is what we're called to do. Amen.